Council meeting of January 6, 2016. Could I have a roll call, please? Dan Carey. Present. Peg Conniff. Here. Salem Derby. Present. Jennifer Hayes. Here. J.P. Guzinski. Here. Joe McCoy. Here. Dan Rist. Here. Tamara Smith. Here. Joy Winnie. Here. Well, please all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the next uh, thing on the agenda is a little bit out of sorts. Um, <clears throat> we missed uh, be able to recognize our, our retiring city councilor at large, Nathan Ziegler. So it's with great pleasure uh, and honor that I get to present uh, Councilor Ziegler with a plaque of appreciation for his two terms and I'm right um, on City Council and a uh, standing job and a well thought out. Okay, um, we're now on to public speak time, which is where anyone from the public who would like to address the council. Okay, sorry, let me back up for a minute. Approval of the minutes. Could I take a mo accept a motion for the approval of minutes of December 16th? So moved. Second. Okay, a motion a second for the approval of the minutes of December 16th. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Aye. Probably, uh, so Abstain. probably three with Peg, too. <laughs> Joy, Peg, and Dan. Right. Anybody else? Lisa, could, pass. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> Okay, now uh, we can move on to public speak time. So public speak time, again, is an opportunity for someone to come to the podium, speak to the council about anything other than what's on the public hearings, which we have none tonight. The, I just so it is not misinterpreted, we are limited by uh, open meeting rules that we can't discuss with you anything you talk about because it would need to have been pre advertising since we don't know what you may be talking about. In this, at this opportunity, anyone wants to come up to the podium and address the city council, feel free to. If you could just state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, good evening, my name is Paul Morey. Uh, I live at 14 Dewey Street here in East Hampton. Um, my son is Andrew Morey, who uh, has sent you a letter, which I believe you're going to read this evening. Um, earlier this afternoon, um, my son and I were in my living room uh, being interviewed um, for the news and um, I'm speaking on the Confederate flag issue just in case anybody's not aware um, but we were being interviewed um, and the uh, nice lady asked my son a question uh, she said are you a racist and uh, of, of course his response was no um, and it as I as I listened to that it made me think of a lesson that I and I'm sure everyone in this room uh, learned in their childhood or at some point, which was don't, excuse me, don't judge a book by its cover. Um, I would like to ask everyone a question for you to just ask yourself. Um, I, would, I would ask you to ask yourself, do I think that all Muslims are terrorists? I would hope that everyone would answer no to that question. I certainly would. The second question I'd like you to ask yourself is this. Do I think that all people who fly the Confederate flag are racist? Now, I would hope that the answer to that question is also no. Um, it's certainly been an interesting day for me um, and my son, um, but I think the lesson that we can come away with or the, I guess the warning we should take away from this whole issue is everyone should be careful um, for demanding that other people's rights be curtailed or taken away. Because at some point in, I don't care who you are, I don't care how you could be the nicest person in the world, but at some point in your life, you're going to say something or do something that someone else is gonna find offensive. And be careful if you demand that somebody else's rights be taken away, because someday, somebody may demand that yours be taken away. Thank you very much for your time. And I also appreciate um, you uh, reading his letter as part of the record. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, is there anyone else from the public who would like to? Mr. Valancourt, please, if you could just state your name for the record and address, please. Good evening. Jim Valancourt, 15 Cottage Street. I uh, just want to take this opportunity to welcome the new council members. 
<laughs> and uh, also to say how proud I am to live in a city where the city council reaffirms that we are a city that treats people equally and fairly and ethically and that there's no place for bigotry in the city. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else from the council? I mean, I'm sorry, from the public who would like to address the council on this. Okay. Not being seen. Uh, so we'll move on to communications from elected officials, boards, and committees. So, Councillor Derby. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> uh, the council did receive a letter from the East Hampton Affordable and Fair Housing Partnership uh, regarding um, the Cottage Square Apartments. Uh, it seems like there were some concerns. Uh, there was a meeting, and those concerns have now been addressed, and it looks like things will continue to move forward amicably. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now, under correspondence, we are going to, as uh, our gentleman uh, spoke to, we're going to address some of the letters that were received. So, Councillor Smith had crafted a reply from the City Council, so I'm going to ask her to uh, read the initial letter and her, and her crafted response to that, please. Okay. Thank you. Okay, for the record, I am reading a letter that was sent to the City Council from Carolyn do I need to say her last name? Um, I just have her as um, Carolyn Zykowski. Yeah, and it's her a public email. work. That'd be fun. Okay. Um, to the mayor and the city council members, I live on Grant Street in East Hampton. There is a Confederate flag flying in my neighborhood at one gross lane at the corner of Parsons. I find this offensive and scary, as do many other East Hampton residents I know. I do not think it is appropriate at all, just like a Nazi or ISIS flag wouldn't be appropriate. This does not belong in East Hampton, nor does it reflect the open and generous spirit of East Hampton should an outsider drive through. I know there's not much I can do, but wanted to bring it to your attention. Thank you sincerely, Carolyn Zykowski for Grant Street. My response to this reads, Dear Fellow Counselors, I am writing to encourage each of one of you to consider signing a response that Hayes and I penned in response to Carolyn Zykowski's inquiry about a Confederate flag flying in the new city area. In addition to, to at le in addition to at least two Confederate flags flying in East Hampton, I've also seen Black Lives Matter signs on Clark Street covered with spray paint tagging. We have an opportunity to make a statement that our council does not stand for such blatant racism. I am willing to take up take on following up with creating a list of ways that we have promoted tolerance and inclusiveness in East Hampton and have several ideas to provide educational forums about race relations as well. My colleagues at Westfield State are East Hampton residents and are willing to help facilitate a discussion. Please see the letter below and let me know if you would like to be included in this response. I plan to send this letter out by Friday at the latest. Happy Thanksgiving. Take care. Tamara. The letter, Dear Ms. Sikowski. Your letter caused us great pause as we considered the message that the Confederate flag in East Hampton is sending both to residents and visitors, especially during such historically turbulent times. The flag that is in your neighborhood is not the only Confederate flag in East Hampton, unfortunately. As you know, the freedom of speech protection provided by the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution allows people to fly the Confederate flag on their private property. As city councilors, we do not have the authority to force a private resident to remove the flag. Your email has raised questions for us about what East Hampton does do as a city to promote an inclusive environment and what still needs to be done. The city council has a resolution pertaining to discrimination and intolerance. <clears throat> we have a moral responsibility to hold up to the resolutions that we pledge. We would like to look further into how to document how we have done as a municipality to address issues of race and the specific ways in which the City Council has promoted a community of tolerance and inclusion that recognizes the strengths of a diverse population. One civic engagement group in East Hampton that we would recommend you looking into more is the East Hampton Matters Group. Taken from their webpage, www.easthamptonmatters.org, East Hampton Matters is a grassroots community group that is committed to helping city residents engage in respectful, open discussions about difficult municipal issues. We hope to inspire solution-based conversations that can bring resources and improvements to East Hampton. 
Our community needs to open a dialogue to discuss contemporary race issues and how they affect our residents. While we cannot directly demand or enforce a citizen to remove private property, we can be vigilant in our attempts to create an environment that empowers our residents to be critically engaged in these matters. Thank you for your letter. It's an important reminder that there is still so much to do. Perhaps we should look upon your neighbor's flag as a symbol that there is still unfinished business in confronting and acting on the inequalities that exist not only in our country, but with our own backyard. Sincerely, Tamara Smith. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And then uh, following up that, I will uh, read the letter that uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Mo Mori responded, mentioned was sent in by his son. This was Dan, uh, dated January 5th, 2016. To the Honorable Mayor and the City Councils of the City of East Hampton, the Confederate flag has been put through a lot of stigma lately, saying that somehow the flag itself is racist. I am here to say that a flag cannot by itself be racist. It is under what context that person flies such a flag. This battle flag was a symbol used by the people in this country who believed they had the rights to succeed if the federal government took authority over state governments. This was a key point to the Civil War. The Civil War was fought over states' rights, but acknowledged that slavery became an issue in the war. That being said, I do not condone the ownership of another person. I never will condone such a gruesome act against humanity. Speaking of gruesome acts against humanity, comparing the Confederate flag to the Nazi flag or the ISIS flag is not right. Slavery and the Holocaust are not comparable. Neither are the ISIS beheadings and slavery. They are not the same things. The reason that I chose to fly a Confederate flag on private property should not be of anyone's business but my own. I choose to offer an explanation here because the defense of civil liberties is an important issue to me. First Amendment rights allow me to fly this flag and will continue to do so until it is changed. My private property rights allow me to fly this flag as well. My personal reasons for flying the flag leave me with a clear moral conscience, not because of any apparent racist message. On the contrary, I fly it because without the Civil War, this country would not be as great as it is today. I believe this country is one of the most tolerant and acceptable in the wor whole world because of lessons learned from history. <clears throat> this flag should still be respected as, me as people's heritage. I am currently studying history and am a history major in college. My love of history allows me to respect this flag, not as a racist symbol, but as a symbol of our country's ability to reunite as one. The ideal should be embraced by all people in East Hampton, indeed by all people in this great country. The First Amendment does not contain the the right not to be offended. If we continue down the path of allowing the squeakiest wheel to decide when offensive speech should no longer be tolerated or even allowed, we will lose our First Amendment rights. Once we allow limitations to be placed on our freedoms, then we can never truly be free. Benjamin Franklin once said, those who give up essential liberty to purchase, to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. He also said, freedom of speech is a principal pillar of free government. When this support is taken away, the constitution of a free society is dissolved and tyranny is erected in its ruins. Do you have any questions, concerns about my Confederate flag? I strongly encourage you to speak to me personally before making assumptions about my right to fly it on my property or about my personal beliefs of said flag. I thank you for your time and appreciate your valuable leadership of the city of East Hampton and your more East Hampton resident. Again, thank you uh, very much for this letter, Andrew. And um, <clears throat> although we not, may not agree on everything in here, I applaud your strength of character and bravery to face publicly your, your strength. It's very admirable in a young man. Um, that being said, I think we needed to address this. Um, and so as a council, I have a statement. And the thing I like about this, I bet you the, uh, the more I feel will also agree with this statement. So January 6th, the East Hampton City Council remains true to our oath taken on Monday, January 4th to uphold the Constitution of the United States, including the First Amendment guaranteeing free speech. We also stand by the unanimously passed resolution with zero tolerance for any kind of discrimination in East Hampton. So um, that is what I, I would like to put for our record from the council statements. I think is, you know, I think probably both parties here deserve that there are Lots of pressing issues facing the city, so if you're asked from any more questions from the press, feel free just to refer to this statement um, for the council's opinion. Um, again, thank you all for your participation in your government. Um, Mayor, uh, Mayor Communications, I think we can do that before, oh, there are no public hearings, so Mayor Communications. <laughs> 
On a much lighter note, I'd like to congratulate again, you know, the um, our counselors and also our new counselors on uh, on the on the election, and extend to you my offer. I'm willing to meet with you anytime. Um, but it's pop in, give me a call. Any questions you might have, I just want to extend an open invitation. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever, uh, don't hesitate to contact me. My goal is to obviously work together because I, we're all here for the same reason, to work for the betterment of our community. And so please don't hesitate you know, now or in the future to you know, ask me anything or work with me on any issues. So I really look forward to working with you. And um, I just wanted to bring something to the counselor's attention. Uh, one of your appointments, uh, you have, um, as you all know, you appoint our, um, the assessor. And uh, we have uh, a standard procedure during the, uh, before the probation period is over, which is a six month probation period for a new employee uh, to do a uh, performance review. And uh, which is, you know, done by the HR department or personnel department. Um, and uh, as the appointing authority, uh, this document is, is not a public document, but is open for uh, the counselors to pop in at any time, and uh, it's in the personnel file, and to, to, view the, uh, to view this review. So I just wanted to uh, give you an open invitation and tell you that that document is there for your perusal, but it is not a, a public document. And um, again, any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Okay, are there any questions for the mayor? Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on, we can moving on to standing committees. And again, as I said before, those that are, are, are held by a previous chair, please give the report. I think it was finance with Councilor Brisson and property with Councilor Krasinski, which was different for today. So, rules and government relations, Councilor Rist. Yes, Mr. President, thank you. Uh, then we will again form. Um, our new committee this evening at that time we will discuss perhaps when we could meet to, do, to deal with the item that's on our agenda the new item of electronic agenda discussion I did want to bring forward something that I know will be talked about tomorrow with regard to the um, orientation meeting for our new counselors but I wanted to remind the council I do this every time we start uh, a new term about the open meeting law and how very careful we need to be. You might have seen today there was an item where the Attorney General is taken to task a Northampton committee and uh, they are pretty strong on it. So I remind you that any correspondence you may have, especially electronic, is public record. You cannot debate an item on the agenda by email correspondence with another counselor. You can ask for information through email, for instance, you can ask for information about a subject to the department heads, the mayor, the finance director, etc. But I caution you about sharing any opinions with other counselors. All of these emails are subject to public record and can be requested by the press, and you need to you need to know that. Also, you can't meet where you think you're in private. We are always city counselors. There's no time when we're not a city counselor. So when you meet in private between two or three people and discuss an item on our agenda, you're violating the open meeting law. I just wanted to remind you of that. The other thing we did as a matter of trying to promote transparency, the council a couple of terms ago asked that all of our subcommittee meetings be recorded. So if you're a new chair, you need to make sure that you turn on the recording device if it's available in the room you're meeting in. That's very important. Okay, thank you very much, and I know the orientation committee will go into detail on these items tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, finance, Council List. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, I would like to first announce that our first meeting, having spoken with the other counselors, will be on every other Wednesday, and next Wednesday the 13th at 5 p.m. We're changing the time so that department heads and uh, w we all can maybe have dinner at a reasonable hour. Um, so 5 p.m. next Wednesday, which time we'll discuss items on our agenda. I'd also like to, with the President's uh, permission, refer to the, the budget request that we received from the Finance Director, that is the budget for the City Council, which we must prepare. I'd like to make a motion that that be sent to the Finance Committee for review this evening. Second. second. Okay, a motion and a second to submit to Finance the City Council budget for next fiscal year. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. Thank you. That concludes.
Thank you. Uh, Public Safety, Councillor Hayes. Thank you, Mr. President. After this City Council meeting, we're going to get together and decide when our new committee is going to meet, and I will put all that forward to Barbara. Um, in the interim, I would like to ask for a 90-day extension without prejudice for the request to allow on-street parking on a section of Pleasant Street as it's about to expire. Second. We have a motion a second for a th was a 30 day extension 90 day extension for the pleasant street parking any additional comments questions all those in favor aye, aye. oppose abstain motion passes um this concludes mr president okay, thank you appointments council wayne thank you we met tonight at um, 5 30 to review the um appointment that was um not made at the last meeting which i was not I did not attend and that was for Melissa Cody um, it was um, not voted on at the last meeting because there were some questions and concerns that came up about the appointment um, in the meantime we received a um, communication from Miss Cody who um, eloquently explained um, her processes and what she does during her meetings as um, a member of the um, uh, as a member of the Conservation Commission um, and uh, all three counselors uh, Councilor McCoy, Councilor Smith and myself all felt that um, she um, uh, very eloquently um, iterated in her email to us that um, she was not in any way, may, way shape or form trying to um, make anybody feel uncomfortable during their public meeting and that um, she uh, absolutely encourages the public to come to their meetings with their concerns and to voice them so that they can um, immediately start to um, investigate them so say uh, the appointments subcommittee voted three to zero to recommend the full appointment to the full council um, and um, I will make that in the form of a motion that we recommend Melissa Cody to the Conservation Commission for uh, another two-year term which is to December 31st 2017 uh, 2018. 2018 excuse me thank you okay. to 2018 I make that in the form of a motion please second okay, a motion a second to accept the appointment of Melissa Cody to the Conservation Committee's mission any additional comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, the next appointment in front of us that uh, was discussed is for Eileen Myers to the East Hampton Council on Aging. And because she is uh, related to me by marriage, I am going to hand this appointment over to Councillor Smith and abstain. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Winnie. Thank you. So we. <coughs> met today to discuss the appointment of Eileen Myers to the East Hampton Council on Aging um, with a vote of 2-0 for approving this appointment with one abstention. Uh, we voted to move this appointment to the full City Council for approval. So I would like to make a motion to accept Eileen Myers as an East Hampton Council on Aging a board committee member with a term expiration of 12-31-17. So a second? Okay, well, motion a second to accept <coughs> Eileen Myers, East Hampton Council on Aging. Any additional discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion Abstain. passed. Oh, one abstention. Sorry. Thank you. Um, yes. So our next meeting, thank you, thank you for doing that, Councilor. Mm -hmm. Our next meeting will be on January 20th at 5 o'clock. And I would ask that we add to our agenda that we are going to do the um, <coughs> two mayoral uh, four mayoral appointments. So I make that in the form, form of a motion that the four mayoral appointments uh, in new business be moved to appointment subcommittee. Second. Okay, a well, motion a second to move the recent four mayoral appointments to appointment subcommittee. Any additional discussion or comments? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Staying. Motion passes. Thank you. We are also going to add to our agenda that we are going to ask the mayor to join us to review the appointments application that is online, see if we can tidy it up and update it a little bit so it's more um, community friendly as per se. Um, and then we are also going to develop job description and duties for the appointment subcommittee uh, to 
help uh, Councillor Smith and um, go forward with her uh, new City Council 101 orientation. handbook, orientation handbook. So um, those two things were added to our for our next meeting agenda, which will again be January 20th, 2016 at 5 p.m. Uh, in whatever location that the city clerk puts us in. Okay. Thank you. That concludes. It does. Thank you. Uh, ordinance, Councilor Derby. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, since we haven't met, we don't have a next meeting date that will be forthcoming. <clears throat> I do uh, need to have a order, a piece of housekeeping cleaned up here. I'd like to, in the form of a motion, request a 60-day extension to the request to consider creating food truck ordinance. Second. A motion, a second for a 60-day extension uh, relating to the food truck ordinance. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Motion passes. That concludes. Okay, thank you. Property, Council Krasinski. <laughs> Property will be meeting this evening after uh, our meeting to uh, decide on a, uh, any times that may be necessary. We have no uh, agenda business at this time. Great, thank you. Uh, all business, uh, we still have the boardwalk naming committee. We're still taking names. Um, new business, uh, part of, we've had, there are actually two to three new CPA, CPA appointments that the council and the mayor have to deal with. One of them is a mayoral appointment, which is has been submitted uh, as part of that four that we just moved to appointments. Another one is uh, the finance chair or the finance chair's appointee will be part of the of that committee, and that is uh, something that Council Rist and that committee will deal with of who that will be represented will be on the CPA. The other one is an appointment that is um, appointed is introduced by the city council president, and it's not a mayoral appointment. Um, so it typically doesn't have to go through the uh, sent to subcommittee. We received three applications for it, which was great because we have had these discussions lately. How do we get people to find out openings we have? And so it was interesting asking them, how did you find out? One of them was on Mass Live, um, and then one of them was in the Gazette. So those uh, getting those uh, openings out to the, the press are really important for, for outreach. Um, one of the we had three really actually great applicants um, one of them um, counts uh, mayor Kadger is submitting the one I chose his name is Ryan Barry I believe it's in your packet his background is a letter um, that he's a, a lawyer from Springfield um, lived in East Hampton um, he um, did very well uh, we got um, letters from work I'm saying what uh, outstanding bright and motivated um, young man he was so that was uh, my selection for the Community Preservation Act. Now, I, again, this is usually just a city council president. I like to make take a, a vote on this. Um, so I would. Uh, I'll move that we accept the president's uh, appointment of Raymond Ryan, Ryan, Barry. Ryan Barry to I'll, this CPA. CPA. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll second that uh, motion. The second. Please. So there's a motion, a second to accept the uh, city council president's appointment of Ryan Barry to CPA. Any additional comments or questions? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, motion passes. Abstain. Yeah, I just, I just found it, yes. just reading it now. Okay, so before we conclude our meeting, again, we are right, so basically now, we are going to reorganize, and as I said at the, or, uh, the uh, reorganizing meeting, maybe try to give a little bit of uh, organization to it and try to do it in pairs of two meetings even that there may be you may have to be at, at, at two meetings at one time but it's relatively quick but the first two I think we should try to organize and you can you know take two different corners over there or you can take these two corners mm -hmm. however but finance and ordinance and then when they're done we can do the rules and government relations and property and then we're done we can do a, a appointments and, and public safety um, yeah Councilor. sorry yes, yes Mr. President are we going to go to recess while we're doing this or are we going to stay on no, the we're air? We're going to adjourn gonna this meeting, okay, right? Okay, we're going to adjourn? Yes. Okay. Um, so that's a good point. So I will, since everyone knows what we're going to be doing, and I believe um, you have forms for everyone yeah, to fill out. So so every committee, subcommittee, will have forms to give Barb so she's aware of who that chair and who that mm -hmm. treasurer would be. So on that, I will take a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Second. Like a motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes.